Patience Utopians. Hope all is well. Um, Global here. Want to talk a little bit about uh, this NCA tournament season for women. I got quite a few videos I need to get out there. Uh, let's address the elephant in the room. Caitlin Clark, all-time leading NCA scorer. Uh, passes Tamika Johnson for also most assi career assists in the NCAA tournament. Uh, passed Deanna Tarazi uh, for most three-point field goals made and also uh, not, uh, most three-pointers made in a tournament game in history. Uh, you know, she got ousted last year by LSU, went in the lab, redeemed herself, got better, and came back for hers. And you got to respect that. Um I'm going to say I'm not very impressed with Coach Kim's X's and O's. Uh, I would have put Flage on her. Uh, it's very unfair to leave uh, Vinzy Hallen out there on the island like that to guard uh, Caitlin Clark, who's practically the woman's version of Steph Curry, hence why she was in the All-Star game uh, shooting uh, bucket for bucket with him. Um, first of its kind, shout out to Adam Silver. That's one unique concept I think that should be commended. I, just as much as I've been critical, I also like to acknowledge when people do good things as well, and that is definitely worthy of a mention. Um, I want to get in front of this, though, national anthem thing. Uh, you know, we're going to probably get into uh, a bunch of very, un uh, very sensitive areas in society uh, because they refuse to be available for uh the national anthem and um let me be very clear i think we need to get to a place as a country as a society where we respect people's decisions when kaepernick did his whole crusade nobody even knew what he settled the case for it just was all done and finished when it was done and finished uh obviously you know when you do a settlement sometimes there's terms and conditions that you're not allowed to speak on uh, the Rock tried to offer him an opportunity with the UFL. He didn't play. For, he uh, elected not to. That might have been part of the stipulation. But we're at a place in our country now where there's a lot of schools that have basically prohibited the Pledge of Allegiance. I don't know why we're still having this discussion. Though it's been knocked down several times in the Supreme Court, it has been challenged. People want to remove the Le Pledge of Allegiance. And... Uh, the Supreme Court says it's more patriotic than it has to do with religion because people from all races, genders, and backgrounds take exception to the under God portion of the Pledge of Allegiance. And uh, the same can be said now even uh, for the National Anthem, who I'm sure the military is the number one sponsor of, and a lot of major sports franchises, I mean, ma many professional leagues, the NFL most notably, and I'm sure college sports collegiate sports is also a direct beneficiary um seeing how they're all institutions but we need to get to a place as a society where we accept uh people's beliefs people's uh choice because once the pledge of allegiance started to get challenged at the level that it had america switched from being a country to a bank and so now we got to respect people's choice uh i want to get in front of this though i just wanted to put my two-piece two cents in on this because um you know i know it's going to catch like wildfire even if maybe not necessarily on my page but i just find it very uh annoying you know already women's hoops is surrounded by a lot of underbelly of politics um for instance you can't even really criticize the game without someone trying to show look how fair and impartial i am and you know i, I I'm, I'm glad everyone you know, whether you're liberal, whether you're conservative, I'm glad everyone is defending women's rights to have a space in sports. But uh, I do feel like a lot of people are using this as a platform to try to show their fair and impartialness. Um, it's okay to not like it. It's okay to have disparaging things. For instance, on my post, I, I you know, I re again, I really am a person that watched women's hoop. I watched the first ever WNBA game when it was the Houston Comets versus the New York Liberty. Cynthia Cooper, the WNBA's version of Michael Jordan, Rebecca Lobo, uh, who unfortunately never got to be all that she could be, uh, was riddled by injuries in her career. But uh, I remember the first game last year, I made a post uh, expressing my frustrations with the WNBA championship going on simultaneously during the Super Bowl. Uh, I've spoke with some Nike reps before who've told me that a lot of that is attributed to ESPN and whole bunch of politics with time slots, etc. I don't know. 
it's you know the people I met from Nike was just a coincidence they happened to work for him you know through casual conversation I'm the type of guy I'll strike up a conversation with someone in a coffee shop and later on find out oh shit you know like you were such and such you do this you do that okay cool um met someone randomly who worked for the Clippers like that one time um, just talking to people. Uh, that's why I engage people in the comment section. Some people would tell you, oh, you know, rich people don't waste their time arguing with people in the comment section. But some of the most brilliant ideas I've had have come from bouncing ideas, just engaging people, crowdsourcing, so to speak, uh, with strangers in the comment section. I encourage anyone to do it as long as you're able to control your emotions and um, hear all positions, uh, viewpoints uh, from all parties. Um, so with that being said, um, I would have liked to see Coach Kim of LSU, you know, uh, d focus more on ball denial, uh, put Fly J on, on Caitlin Clark, get the ball early and often in the second half to Angel Reese. Um, there was just a lot of disorganized disorganization on behalf of LSU to Caitlin Clark. She was a one woman show. Uh, you know, she really unchanneled her inner Steph Curry. Congratulations to her. I could see this being a Iowa versus USC. Um, just seeing how, you know, there's a strong probability that Juju Watkins finishes her career second all time in women's scoring, seeing how she's averaging 27.7 as a freshman and Caitlin Clark averaged 26.6. I don't think it's sustainable for her. She's already missed some, a little bit of time. You need every game in order to catch Caitlin. I don't think it's possible, but she can definitely be number two. And I think we're going to be able to, for bragging rights, to be able to look back and say, you know, on some Mayweather Canelo, uh, type of bender, you know what I mean? Or Mayweather Canelo, uh, you know, uh, Tim Duncan against the Spurs type historical thing where, you know, just, uh, young buck meeting the vet, the savvy veteran who's been around the block. But at least it happened. We're glad that it happened type thing. We're going to see likely a USC Iowa. All right, Utopians, I'll try to do better next time. Global, out.